their obsession is to transform the rest of the world into carbon copies of themselves. And in order to further this process of transformation of mankind into carbon copies of themselves, they bring to the world something called globalization. So the whole world becomes connected. The whole world becomes interconnected. And as the world becomes interconnected, television is used as the master instrument for brainwashing the rest of mankind and causing mankind to become copycats of the West. So in a sense what we're seeing is using branding that is so enmeshed in our culture and in our lives as a way back into our own societies, a way to engage with globalization. Because if you pick up a shoe now, you have the story of globalization in your hand. You have leather that was maybe produced in Argentina, shipped to, to the Philippines, produced by a Korean subcontractor that went through a Hong Kong broker that was dealing with a company in Oregon. So you're looking at this thing and if you can deconstruct it, if you can trace all the components through the global economy, and not only that, but find out how much that company that's selling you that shoe spent on advertising last year and how much money they paid a superstar athlete to, sp to sponsor them, then you, you have the disparities of the global economy in nature, the winners and the losers. What we've seen in the past six years is an explosion of brand-based investigative activism where you have campaigners that have peeled, looked behind the brand, peeled away the facade to see uh, how the goods are produced. There are labor groups in the United States that, that have sponsored tours of Nike workers, of Gap workers, going to U.S. campuses, to community centers, to tell people how their products are produced. And of course, this is very uncomfortable for these companies, because even though they are the engines of globalization, they don't really believe in globalization, not this kind of globalization, right? I mean, their whole system depends on the world of production and the world of consumption staying safely apart, and they're not being this connection at the grassroots where we learn the secrets behind our shiny, perfect, airbrushed global world. So now these brands have become, uh, in many ways, the most visible targets of globalization, so much so that whenever you see a protest, during a protest, there'll be a line of riot cops guarding the Starbucks, guarding the Gap, guarding the McDonald's. And this strikes me as tremendously symbolic, somehow, that they're, they're guarding the facade, the entry point into the world of globalization. And what this activism is doing is it's putting them together. And it's going to the shiny facade of the brand outside the mall, outside the superstore, and saying, we know how your products are produced. That's what these campaigns do. They make globalization real. They say, it's about the food that you eat. It's about the clothes that you wear. It's about the toys you buy your kids. Globalization is a system that ties in industries from around the world to be working for the same business interests. A machine globally fulfilling the needs of the few, teaching you that humanity will perish without you. In a globalized world, corporations become living, breathing persons, a modern-day slave master. These are a special kind of persons which are designed by law to be concerned only for their stockholders. 
and not say it works. Sometimes, well, they're stakeholders, like the community or the workforce or whatever. deceived into believing that without the system, we won't survive. But in fact, the system won't survive without our support. Just like a beehive, it needs its drones. People who will never ask questions, people who will never step out of line, who will begin to need the prison they are in, depend on it. Love it. Have we lost our humanity? Have we become the gears of the machine? A machine which only survives by feasting on us, guzzling us up, digesting us, only to excrete out its capital. Corporations, as they say, they think, you know, corporations are like us. General Electric is a kind old man with lots of stories. Nike, young, energetic. Microsoft, aggressive. McDonald's, young, outgoing. Monsanto, immaculately dressed. Disney, goofy. The body shop, uh, deceptive. They think they have feelings, they have politics, they have belief systems. They really only have one thing, the bottom line. How to make as much money as they can in any given quarter. That's it. Of course they make a profit. And it's a good thing. That's the incentive that makes capitalism work. To give us more of the things that we need. <laughs> 